Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of Ray of All Trades. We are continuing on the Bad Boy Buggy. I'm hoping to do uh, several parts of this series because I've noticed that there's not a lot of videos out on this particular beast. Really nice cart that I traded my uh, gas powered golf cart for. Pretty excited about it. This one, because of uh, it was out exposed to elements for quite a while, the seats are less than, less than desired. So you can see that the wood just got destroyed on these things. I bought staple on style covers. The foam actually, other than being dirty, looked actually pretty decent shape. Uh, may end up having to go back and change it out, but I'm gonna try it without it. Had some spare plywood laying around. I'm gonna change that out. I've got some new, new covers. Let's see what we get. So the new covers I'm trying to use are a blade rear seat cover, G150 Mach 1, it's in, they're black. Anyway, came as a uh, set, it's the bottom and the backrest, and it also comes with the, um, I always called it piping, but it's not really piping, I guess it's uh, edge material. You lift these two edges up and staple between there. Let's take it apart and see what we get. I'm going to take a quick me couple measurements just to see how close we are because uh, you can't really use the, the foam to determine the width because it's going to compress. So the old seat, the wood was uh, 13 inches deep and let's see, this is going to be a tough one because it's really, it's really spread apart here. So um, let's just say 13 by 36. That's pretty close. And what do we have here? Oh, that's only 12. So I need to go find another piece of wood. This will probably work just fine for the backrest, but uh, not gonna work well for the seat cushion. So let me go see what else I have. All right, let's try that again. Went back out to the uh, stash of wood, found another Another piece, it appears to be about 7 16 thick, something like that. And I found another piece a little bit thicker for the front seat, which is uh, wider. So I imagine this one actually bolts to a platform. The other one has to span over the top of the motor. So I would imagine the front one will be need to be thicker. Let's see, we said we wanted uh, 13 by 36, right? We can go that way. Uh, it's actually a little bit closer to go this way. So a little bit less waste going this way. Let's set the blade for the least amount of kickback and splintering so it just goes through the bottom of the board. That'll help a little bit. And then we just need to verify that we're not going to cut through our sawhorses. Let's get some safety glasses on. Okay. Now here's what I wanted to point out. See how this edge right here is uh, really sharp? It's got a corner to it. Now these aren't like that. It's gonna be hard for you to see because there's nothing left of this wood. Actually, no, there's a little bit left. So you can see there's a little bit of an angle there. Um, they just rounded the edges. So let's see if we can match that up with something. Something like that. All they did was they took a little bit of this edge off of here. Can you guys see that? Just 
all they did was they took a little bit of this edge off of here something like that let's see if that matches up with anything How about a paint can yeah that might do that's pretty close to a rounded edge so let's see bring that give myself room for the pencil lid yeah give or take it's close it's not rocket science but this is backyard repair so there I'm sure there's a poster actual professional upholsterers that are cringing right about now unfortunately I can't quite afford some of their prices even though they do fantastic work a I'm cheap B they're used to doing show uh, show quality type material repairs I just want to be able to put new seats on my golf cart Okay, if you think that you're planning on uh, having this out in the moisture, now would be a great time to put some wood treatment with preservative on here like you would put on your deck. If you have any of that laying around, obviously the color wouldn't matter. You just want to protect it. So any kind of a sealer would be great right now if you planned on doing that. I was also told that there is another trick you can do here, which is um, drill a couple of holes in here so that when somebody sits down it pushes the air through the cushion and out those holes so i'm not positive it's going to work so i'm going to do it first without it and then if i if i think it needs it i'll come back with a wood boring bit and i'll drill a couple of holes i want to see what it's like without it first let's see what we got here this these cushions are extremely expensive this foam So I'm gonna try to reuse what I have. So it's kind of a budget build more than anything. That's the rusted remains of some of the staples. Watch your fingers. I'm kind of thinking I want to uh, use a little bit of a diluted vinegar just in case there's any kind of mildew here. It's the part that's gonna be in touch with the, the wood. Just in case any of that was mildew, I just wanted to try to get some of it off of there. Let's see what our difference looks like here. I should have some foam hanging all the way around so that when you go to pull the uh, material over, it's not gonna, you know, cut itself on this part. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's got a, it's got a decent overhang all the way around. This board is definitely thicker than the last one. So I'm not sure if I want to chamfer this edge or try it as is. And I think I want to just try it as is and see what it looks like. See how it wraps around. Because um, I could also, I could, like I said, I could chamfer this. I could also cut this material so that the board sits inside and recessed in here. I don't think I want to do that. I kind of like the way this sits right now. We'll find out together how this goes and then you guys can make yours, fix yours better. I wanna see if I have any foam to fit that. I went scrounging for some foam that was similar density. Cause you're trying to find something that's similar density um, for patching a hole like that. 
and this memory foam is not. It's way too soft. This one is close. Um, not quite as dense as this one though. It compresses quite a bit. I found uh, this green one. It's getting closer. But this pink one is actually really close to the same density. So I think we're going to cut a little piece of this off and try to patch that. Got the hot glue gun warming up. Because all I want to do is just tack it in place. So it's good to keep little pieces like that laying around. Let's see. Okay, that's pretty close. Um, so all you want to do now a serrated knife, electric carving knife, something like that would work great here. One of these is the yep, so that's the backrest. That's the backrest. It's got the swell in it. And I guess I need to figure out which way I want it to sit does have a pattern so if that's the that's the back and we know what the top is because let's see we want it to look like that I think we do um, the seat is perfectly square it's not that big of a deal right now well it's a rectangle so it doesn't matter which side is the front and the back but I do have to figure out how I want that to sit eventually. Some of these you have to put in the dryer to make them to make them reach. I'm not sure if this is one of them. Let's get this stuffed in there the best way we can. You want to try to get this centered up on that cushion as best possible, best way possible. And like I said, some of them require putting it in the dryer to make it more pliable. Take your time on this part. Looks like my corners are pretty close. And when we go to staple it down, we're going to be pulling this really tight, as tight as we possibly can.
it. So my first couple of staples are going to be to hold this side in the center. As like I said, I'm trying to, I'm aiming for center. So, so yeah, I'm gonna put a couple of them here. I'm gonna put a couple of them right here. Then I'm gonna pull as hard as I possibly can, massaging it to try to get this one pulled as tight as I can, and a couple of them here. Then I'm gonna start working my way around. A couple of them here, keep working my way until it's really tight all the way around. Once I'm done stapling all that, then I'll put that piping or that edge on this stuff. Once that's up on there like that, we're gonna lay this across it and then you can put a staple in that groove right inside there. All right, you put a staple in there and then when the staple, once the staple's in there, this goes back over and closes over that staple. So that staple's hidden and then this staple is hidden inside there. And you just run this all the way around the seat. Let me start working on this. This is gonna be a sped up timeline because it takes a long time. Like I said, every time that you go to uh, put a staple in, you're gonna wanna pull as much material as you can and then sporadically keep checking yourself as you're going to make sure that nothing bad is happening on this side. Like you're not pulling and causing wrinkles over here or something like that. So you wanna keep checking. That way if you have to pull the staples back out, you're only pulling out a few and not the whole thing. So let me get my uh, pneumatic stapler set up and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so we're gonna, my first thing was gonna be to use these, uh, um, the pneumatic stapler and it would have gone down into the cushion. I don't know about that far or something like that. Uh, not a big deal because the other one obviously had staples in it that I was pulling out. So that part's not that big a deal. Um, but while I was looking through my staples, I found a box of stainless uh, half inch T50 staples um, that I used for my boat carpets uh, back when I was redoing that surface. And it's on an electric T50 stapler. So I wanna see if this will hold, I think it will. And being that it's stainless, if it does hold, there's a less chance of it rusting. What I remember about these, this electric stapler is it, it uh, misfired pretty constantly. Oh, it's not great, you know, as far as staplers are concerned. But it might do the trick on this one. We're feeling pretty good about this being centered in the cushion. Let's just drop a couple of staples in here real quick. I just pulled it tight. All right, so now I remember the stapler wants you to push hard down, um, which makes sense. But the first one I fired, I wasn't pushing hard enough. And you can see that it's left a raised edge. So operator error. All right, so I'm gonna push, push pretty hard that direction. I'm pushing all that that way. I'm gonna pull this material up rolling my fingers pulling it up okay so side to side that's this way it pulled pretty good let's see yeah it looks like there's a little bit of cushion of a reveal on this side Basically, the stitching is uh, here, and then it rolls out. That's about even on both sides. Now, let me see about pulling the material that direction. And I'll staple just this part on that side. I'm going to pull them tight, though. And you'll see, start seeing it come through as we're doing this that way. So... Let's 
see some wrinkles. It's going to take a little bit to get out of there. I bet you as soon as it gets in the sunlight, it's one of those that shrinks up. But now let's see. Over on these edges, you got to pull too because there's some wrinkling forming here. So I'm going to have to pull, pull that pretty snug to get some of that out of there. So let's get these first. And then pull the opposite direction. What I'm doing is I'm pinching the material and I'm using my knuckles to roll it up. starting to pull tight starting to take some shape um, you can still see that there's wrinkles and it's obviously because there's a whole lot of material that hasn't been pulled up yet so what I'm gonna do is go around the go around it and keep pulling up getting it as tight as I can all the way around and then we'll put that trim piece on the end So I'm going to start on a corner, um, try to keep it in a, ooh, oh, this isn't enough material to make for this, because it might be actually enough material to go around the complete backrest. Let me get the backrest off of the cart so I think that this banding piping edging whatever you call it is probably for uh, golf cart seats that have uh, don't have a back to them like this one does so this one's got this plastic cover and I think that's probably why because I would anticipate they think that it's going to be exposed Somebody already recovered this one or put new wood on this one at some point because I see that somebody wrote outside and it's some sort of a maybe pressure treated plywood. We're going to pull this cover off and attempt to use this template because the, the wood is actually in pretty decent shape. And if the wood's in really good shape, I may end up because it's got the somebody put the uh, bolt holes or the uh, the T, T screws in here, we may end up reusing that, that board and just putting a new cover on it. But no matter what, we're definitely taking these, screw, these uh, staples out. So this is a very tedious process, taking all these out. Um, so I'm not gonna burn up a whole lot of 
battery on the camera for pulling this out, but basically I'm gonna pry every one of these staples out of here so I have nothing left but just some wood to fasten to. I'll be back with you guys. Got most of the staples out of it. Um, just in case I need this template and it happens to be the same size as the other one, I'm not sure if it is, but we're gonna just take a quick uh, drawing of the old one. You never know, you may need it. So, and then for whatever reason they labeled this as the outside. So let's save that just in case we need it. So if this was the outside, let's put the foam on here. So I'm going to bend this foam. Stuff that side. Okay, so I've got both sides somewhat stuffed in there. Let's flip this down. And we're going to mash this in. I think that this board that they used is actually too big because it's larger than the uh, than the foam. And like I said, this isn't the original. It's a it's a uh, replacement. Yeah, that would have been a really sharp edge on there. I want to see how close it actually is. Feels like they made the wood the exact same size as the foam. It's pulling pretty significantly on the stitching there. I really feel like I need to take uh, I really feel like I need to take some of this edge off of here. When I stretch this out and it starts pulling on that stitching, that foam still is short of, of the wood here. Let's take off something like that and see if it gets a, uh, see if it fits any better. I can always go back and remake it. Like I said, I've got the template. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit short on that side. That is really close. I'm gonna update the uh, template just a little bit. Call this one actual. That's about it right there. So I've just been placing this a couple of feet from the uh, a couple of feet from the wood stove and it's warming up the material quite a bit making it stretch a little bit easier I saw some people said that they could put it in the dryer I don't know if it'll work or not 
Meaning I don't know that the material, if the material will hold up to the dryer or not, but let's put just a couple more and then we're going to check to see how it's holding up. Okay. Alright, so from here out is what I'm concentrating on right now. Let's see, that needs to be pulled tight. But this bottom edge is pretty close. I think once I pull this seam up, it'll be all right. Oh yeah, that's gonna clean up okay. Let me finish stretching this thing out. Put it back in front of the stove because it's starting to cool down. So they're not fastened down yet, because um, this is going to slide up here, about there, and get fastened so that it can flip down. And then this will get fastened onto that back bar there. Uh, I want to finish both sets of seats before I fasten that down. All in all, I, I think I like it uh, this way versus we were talking about a reverse pattern. A reverse pattern would have been like that and I don't think I like I don't think I like that pattern so something like that I'll get all this bolted on work on the front and uh, wrench repeat same thing I just did on this one and I'll show you guys the finished product New life to old seats. Recruited some help. Help with the staple gun. Didn't turn out too bad. So, not a professional job, but definitely a lot more solid than it used to be. Still got the tray here. And slide over. I still need to put these little uh, 
metal tabs up here that were missing. Yeah, it didn't turn out too bad. Thanks to my helper. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got something out of the video, appreciate a uh, thumbs up. Subscribe helps the channel tremendously. As always, thanks for hanging out. Catch you on the next one.